Okay, Eric. Uh, I'm thinking we can start, guys. Yep. Um, the others can uh, get us uh, as we proceed. All right, all right. Yeah, so... Yeah, I have um, I think uh, Carol was having a problem, but I've sent her the details mm -hmm. to log in directly. The, the, oh. It was a requirement to register for this class. So I believe there are guys who, who registered and they'll be joining. Oh, okay. Uh, because okay. for me, I I was surprised. I, I thought I was going to follow the same link we had last time. Oh, uh, so most probably the guys got confused. All right, we can go on. All right. Okay. Um, so as as planned, today we are going to look largely on uh, time series, mm -hmm. and uh, this is similar to regression to some extent. The only difference is uh, based on regression, um, we have several uh, independent variables, but in this case, if the independent variable is a uh, time of uh, equally, equally spaced duration intervals, um, and we are talking about one uh, target variable, then it becomes time series, as we will see on subsequent slides. So we look at uh, definitions and uh, some common definitions and applications. We look at uh, time series techniques, uh, what it entails in modeling a time series, and if uh, time allows, we will also look at uh, what it means uh, on when you mention moving averages or what what exactly is smoothing uh, and what is exponential smoothing, univariate time series, and multivariate time series. All this is going to be dependent on the time we have today and uh, the engagement that we're going to have. Time series is quite expansive and uh, a bit complex. It's uh, not as straightforward as just trying starting to model. You need to understand the concepts behind it and uh, how it's different from uh, the normal regression. Um, problems that we've covered so far in previous classes. All right, um, so we're going to look at uh, time series definitions, applications, and techniques. And uh, we will understand the common terms, uh, the applications of time series, and the techniques used. All right, uh, definitions. Even before we go to the definitions, uh, let's look at that, uh, that graph on the right. So the, the, blues, the, the blue side, it's, uh, you can decide to, 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 to plot a trend graph of uh, say the sales of any organization uh, from January to December. You look at uh, from January to December of uh, two years, for instance. So number one to number 12 is, uh, one stands for January, 12 stands for December, and then 13 stands for January, the subsequent year, and then uh, 24 st um, stands for, for instance, December of the subsequent year. So uh, looking at a period, um, this is a trend uh, for sales. So if you look at it, it could be sales, it could be um, orders, it could be whatever is of interest to you. In this particular context, let's, let's pick uh, sales. So in January, the sales starts from say 150, and then it goes up uh, slightly uh, in February, and then it starts dipping. Uh, it dips up to uh, say May, and then in uh, June, it starts going up. June, July, August, September, it starts coming down. October, November, it's down in November, it's down in December, and then after December, it's just going up again. Now, um, the only thing I can relate to is, uh, uh, the only thing I can relate to that can adopt to this kind of uh, pattern is probably the school or education sector. So education sector, people buy a lot of uniform, a lot of books, uh, pay school fees uh, in the first part of the year, unlike, the industry, hospitality industry, when uh, people really have a lot of fun during holidays, like now towards December, you expect the sales to go up. 
Now, let's assume this is an education, uh, it's in education sector. So that is a trend for the first year. And then let's look at the trend for the second year. Um, January it goes up, uh, but not as high as the first, first year, because uh, the topmost peak of January was around 160 there. Uh, for the second year, for the first year, we've seen in February it got up to 170. Yeah, um, but when we look at uh, it, starts dipping again, and then month 17, uh, probably uh, this could be May of the second year, it starts going up again uh, for whatever reason, and then start dipping. Yeah. So the blue part um, is a reflection of our of our sales, the data that we have. Yeah, we have data for two years and we've plotted, and that is the pattern we observe for the sales of uh, whatever item um, that we pick to study in this case. And uh, in um, December of the year two, that is the data we have. We have so. Assuming that uh, we were to predict subsequent years for the next one year, the orange line now indicates the predictions. And you see that we have a primary line that is orange, that is a bit darker, and then we have uh, some thinner light lines around it. Yeah. So, um, that trend from uh, month 24 to month 36 are the predictions, yeah? And this is a typical case of time series. You look at one, one target variable and uh, map it and observe the trend across equally spaced intervals for a certain duration, yeah? So let's come back. That was just a... Uh, um, a heads up on what we see on the on the trend graph. Let's come back to the terms. The first one is time series. So first of all, it needs to be ordered sequence of values or variable at equally spaced time intervals. That is very, very important. The time intervals should be equally spaced. Yeah, equally spaced. Uh, so if it is month on month, it can be day, day by day. Even you might want to trend um, things happening in any particular day, but now uh, hourly, hourly. So you could see year by year, it could be month on month, it could be week by week, it could be day by day um, and hourly. So the, the time intervals needs to be equally spaced. Univariate time series is when you're looking at only a single, uh, you're, you're, you're looking at a single uh, target variable uh, over a regular time intervals. Now, there is something that I want to bring in relation to our previous classes. When you are handling regression, and particularly multiple linear regression, uh, we had several features. And when we are handling several features, we, uh, we call it like cross-sectional data. So it means that the target variable is dependent on quite a number of features. That is cross-sectional data. Now that is a differentiating thing between a uh, time series and uh, a normal regression problem. Okay. All right. So um, we have the components of time series. So we've looked at um, the trend and we've understood uh, that the time, the time should be equally spaced. There is someone with a bit of noise. Let me mute them. That is massive. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've looked at uh, we've looked at uh, the trend, and we've also understood that it has to be uh, equally spaced. And we are looking at a single variable over the regular intervals of a period. And we've also understood that this period can be either hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or even annually, yeah? So there are several things that could happen as you observe this uh, trend. Um, first of all, um, uh, as you plot this uh, graph, line graph, you could observe there is actually a trend, yeah? 
Um, and uh, what we mean by a trend is just, uh, can you observe that uh, there is a long-term pattern uh, that you can see from what you have plotted? So if there is a long-term pattern, that means that you're, you're observing a certain, a certain trend to it. Yeah, and then uh, there is a second term, or rather the second component of time series, um, it's called seasonality, yeah? So uh, within that pattern, if there is a pattern, uh, within that pattern, can you observe some irregular behavior, yeah, in the data? Um, that, uh, okay, it's, it's not that it's irregular, but subsequent, it, it makes it, uh, it creates either uh, dips or peaks within specific uh, time period. You might see that uh, if, you, if you plot, if you plot uh, over a two year period, and then you observe that between April and August, there is a, a unique pattern and the subsequent year, there is a unique pattern between April and August, then um, you could see that this, this pattern is seasonal. It can only happen between April and August. So that is now the seasonality uh, aspect of, uh, of, uh, of time series, yeah? So uh, things like the migration of the wildebeest uh, normally create some um, seasonality, especially in the hospitality industry, where either you are you are plotting the number of visitors or the number of uh, tourists coming to a certain location, it might spike before August, and uh, when August comes, it starts dipping after the wildebeest migration. That is an example. Another example would be uh, hospitality, the, the check-in and check-outs of a, the hospitality in terms of tourists in and out of a country or in and out of a, of a, of a county. So when you ob observe or plot this uh, target variable over a certain period of time with equally spaced uh, uh, time intervals, then that is the aspect that we say seasonality. Now, cycles, is uh, it's not it's not uh, seasonal, but you can observe even with those seasonality, it might differ. Like maybe maybe the number is uh, lower as much as there is incoming traffic. Maybe the number is lower as compared to the previous one, and maybe the number of actually or it's even higher. So you can see like there is some cycles um, you can observe from. Uh, your, your, your line graph or your trend, yeah? And then random variation would be, for instance, you are, uh, it's, it's December and uh, obviously you have, uh, you expect the check-ins into hotel to increase because everyone is at home and some people are able to go for holidays. So the number of check-ins into hotels can go up. But there, there could be a, a happening that just before uh, the December, there was a spike of tourism, of, of check-ins, maybe just before one of, and then your investigation could probably reveal that, okay, before the December period, there was a spike because maybe there was an international a seminar, like the GES uh, summit that we hosted here some years back. Uh, global Entrepreneurship Summit. Such an event can actually create a, a peak when uh, we expect that uh, we shouldn't have a lot of tourism, especially if it came in a period when there is no, uh, maybe schools are still in, in session, uh, guys are still working, no holiday coming, and then all of a sudden there is a peak uh, because um, of a Global Entrepreneurship Summit that we are holding as a country. Yeah, so those are some of the things that you need to be aware of when you're looking at um, time series. You need to com consider the trend, you need to consider seasonality, you need to consider cycles, you need to consider random variation. And then that again makes it uh, worth studying separate from normal regression patterns, yeah? So when you look at normal regression patterns, we don't consider all these things. We are looking at uh, either one or multiple, or rather, we are looking at one uh, target variable, yeah, over a fixed uh, 
time frame but the time frame is not regular and uh, we are, are uh, we know that we know we know we know like uh, the several uh, what is it called several independent variables that we are using to make the prediction yeah but this one we are going to predict um, over another period so if you are studying uh, daily so we know um, for the next number of uh, days we expect this to be the pattern okay all right um so applications you might want to ask uh, what are some of the applications for time series now some of them i've mentioned in uh, in the previous slide uh, but there's so many applications there's so many for instance uh, i've said in the hospitality industry uh, can you really predict uh, the anticipated uh, can you predict the anticipated number of tourists or check-ins in for a specific hotel when you study the data for that particular hotel or can you can you predict the number of uh, check-ins uh, for a certain county when you study the various check-ins for a certain period of time uh, across several hotels? Yes, and uh, that would help you do those predictions. And that is another example of time series. Now, in a in a in a company setup, for instance, if uh, you are in customer service, and this is normally a, a very good uh, example. If you're in customer service, as the manager of customer service, you might want to know um, how many, how many, how many, how many calls or how many messages or how many, how many support queries we are going to get. Guys, just excuse me for a minute. I need to pick a, a call. Okay, sorry guys, I had to pick that call. Um, as I was explaining, if you're in the customer customer care uh, industry, and uh, there are certain tasks that you need to do um, with regards to with regards to the job that you need, you're managing, you're managing probably customer care agents, or you're managing, uh, yeah, for instance, customer care agents, and and. The way if if the number of calls to the you have a call center if the number of calls to your call center varies day by day for example if you're uh, you have a lot of outages day one you're supporting say um uh you install aerials for instance your company builds these aerials and then you install them or maybe dstv for example you use dstv for example uh, you, your company does installation and support for those areas. So whenever there is an outage, uh, you expect more calls to come through. So if uh, whenever there is no outage, then you expect normal calls. Like, let me say, I need to renew my DSTV license. Uh, I need to upgrade my DSTV license. So the number of calls vary, the normal daily support, um, support calls. So for instance, you need to be able to know the number of customer care agents that you have through for the next three months, uh, how are you going to distribute them? Are you going to need, for instance, if you have a customer care agents, like 15 customer care agents, handling around um, the entire Nairobi, for instance. So uh, will you need all those 15 on a daily basis or can you distribute them for optimal cases in shifts? Yeah, so if you can manage them in shifts uh, or even, uh, uh, on, on certain shifts, you have only two people. On certain shifts, you have only, um, say, six people. Can you be able to do that? And what is going to enable you to do that is to be able to study, uh, for you to be able to study how is the demand for support changing within a given time. And the demand for support changes based on the calls that you receive, emails that you receive, SMS that you receive, so if you have more, more uh, support call demands, then you need more agents. This is another typical example of using a time series. And there are so many other reasons, uh, but around the same. Uh, utility study, workload projection. So if uh, your projection tells you for the next two weeks, you'll only receive on average 10 calls in a day, then you need one or two people. But it, it, if, it, if your prediction tells you for the next two weeks, 
boss, uh, you'll receive an average of 200 um, calls in a day. For instance, the day that uh, Pizza Pizza Inn normally have uh, their uh, promotions, uh, they normally receive several phone calls, and they normally receive um, uh, normal calls uh, on other days. So as the call center manager, you need to be able to know when to add uh, personnel to handle those calls or support calls and when not to do that. Because failure to do that will definitely result to customer satisfaction and your business will start, customers will start complaining and your business will uh, dip and dip and dip. All right. Um, I'm gonna take a break again for two minutes, please. Sorry for that. Uh, I just need to make sure that they, 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 uh, we are uh, we're not disrupted. Okay, um, uh, I'm back. So that is the applications for time series. And uh, we have several terminologies. Now we've understood uh, what time series is, uh, why we need it to study it on equal intervals. We've also understood the, the difference between time series and regression. We've understood the applications where, and wh what are some of the decisions it can help us make uh, or even at our capacity. Um, what it can help us uh, in, in terms of decision making, planning, um, and now we want to understand what are some of the terminologies that come with uh, with the time series. Yes. So the first one is uh, something called white noise. Uh, so basically, what, what what white noise is is if you have um, a scatter plot of series uh, across time, that uh, it's a bit difficult to 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 observe or rather uh, it, it doesn't change with time for uh, um, uh, I'm looking for an example. For instance, if we, if you want to study the age of students over an 11, 11 month period, yeah. 11 month period. This would probably not be the best example, but as you handle several time series, I think this would, this is a good benchmark to, to try and understand what white noise is. Um, 11 period and you're studying the rate of change of um, your age of your class, that age doesn't change at all. So even in that, in that, in that period, you can only say the average you can only say the average uh, uh, age of, uh, of my student over that period is X. So an average is normally given as, as a pre prediction whenever you have white noise in your data. So you're looking at a series that uh, exhibits that kind of pattern and we consider that to be white noise. You cannot really use it to, to make uh, a time series prediction. You really cannot do that. Um, you cannot predict the age of your student um, over an 11 month period. All right. Autoregressive model. Now, autoregressive model, you see the principle behind time series is this. Uh, time series looks at um, the changes in the past and how that can be used to make predictions for the future. So it either looks at what was the value of this variable that I'm studying yesterday, what was the value um, it had the day before yesterday, and what was the value it had three days, four days, five days, six days before. It could be days, it could be months, it could be years, or it could even be hours if you're looking at a, a, daily, a daily trend or you are looking at a daily time series. In the case of uh, you want to predict the next hour, this is most likely to happen or uh, uh, the next two hours, this is most likely to happen. So it looks at what happens in the past or in the, in the time interval. So whenever we look at um, the occurrence uh, of that uh, variable in the past, then we are looking at uh, building an autoregressive model. Yeah, an autoregressive model. That is what you're doing. So the model that we are building is based on what happened in the past. Um, in uh, specific time lags. So what you're saying is if it is an hour ago, it was at the current time minus one hour. 
and it was either the current time minus two hours. If it's number of days, then it will uh, the current day minus a day or minus a two. So whenever we have that kind of change, we are looking at an uh, autoregressive model. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, moving averages is uh, slightly uh, different from autoregressive. Yeah. And uh, moving averages, what it does is, whenever you make certain, um, whenever you make certain, uh, uh, observations, there's normally uh, an error term. Yeah, I want to I want to uh, give an example of uh, of. Uh, y is equals to mx plus c, and then there is always an error term when you're doing a regression, yeah? So uh, the best way to look at this is when you look at, after making a prediction, there is always, a, you've missed the predicted value. The, pre, the difference between the predicted value and the actual value, there is always a, 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 a difference. That difference becomes the error. It's by, by what margin did you get uh, it wrong? Did you get the prediction wrong? So um, moving average basically looks at the difference in those error terms uh, uh, over a certain time period. Yeah, and like the previous one where you're looking at autoregressive model, you're looking at the values, you're looking at the values over the time lags. Right now we are looking at the error terms over the time lag. So there is a way that the information you get by studying the time lags or the error terms within those time lags over a certain period of time, um, basically your model would be able to achieve something else. So if you are optimizing those error, within a time uh, your model will be able to learn how the error, uh, the random error changes over a period of time. But if you look at an uh, autoregressive model, you'll be able to look at uh, how your values change over a period of time, yeah? And what you're looking at on the slide is actually the representations of uh, both autoregressive model and uh, moving averages model, right? Now, we have something, I'm so sure those guys, uh, if you've Googled on, uh, if you've done your Googling or even personal study on time series, you've come across ARMA. ARMA is a combination of both. So your model, the model you're building uh, considers both uh, uh, the values as they change over a period of time, as well as how the error terms change over a pe particular period of time. So it is autoregressive together with moving average. So you're building a model that encompasses both. So uh, it is, if you ask me, then um, there, are certain, there are certain scenarios where combining both gives you much, much more better results. But there are situations where autoregressive auto uh, modeling would just suit the purpose. Uh, there are times where moving average would also actually suit the purpose, and there are times when combining both two uh, would actually give better results. So as you study the time series, it is up to you to determine uh, which one do you use. And in subsequent slides, I'll also explain to you um, uh, uh, how you can actually uh, infer which model to use, uh, which of the models to use. All right, so uh, there is something called weak, uh, weakly stationarity and uh, strong stationarity. So before even I define what they are, uh, we need to understand what stationarity is, yeah? So one thing about uh, trending um, time series is the analysis and the study needs to be on stationary, uh, it needs to be um, like frozen. So what I mean by uh, this being frozen, if you look at a graph as it changes, just sim I wish I had captured a graph on this slide, uh, but I want you guys to simulate and think of um, a graph that uh, either goes up, there is an upward trend and then it comes down and then it goes up again and then it comes down. Now slice that graph into several portions, time windows. Yeah, when you slice them, that graph into several time windows, you will be able to get, uh, you'll be able to get uh, um, uh, variation. 
you'll be able to get certain uh, statistical uh, measurements within those time windows. So uh, having a frozen having a frozen time series. Uh, what I mean by station stationarity of a time series uh, pattern is to make sure that there is similarity or those statistical measures of those time windows after splitting the time series is the same. So if there is mean, the mean on this slice, the mean on this slice, the mean on this slice is the same. So more often than not, that is not the case. Yeah, You'll find that especially when you're having a peak, when you're having peak um, high values and then you try and slice it and, and, and get, and get uh, the mean of that time value, you'll find that the mean is either higher or lower compared to the previous slice. So it is important for you to station, is it to stationarize, like now to freeze it, um, to ensure that there is stationarity. Yeah. Uh, and there are techniques to help us achieve that. Yeah. So as a terminology, you need to understand that there is stationarity and there is our techniques to help us achieve um, uh, that stationarity uh, for time series. If you don't do that, then um, your prediction are going to be way, way off. All right, now, um, uh, differencing is, for example, you, you do your, your, your line graph, you do your plotting, and then there is a, a way of detecting whether your, your series is stationed or it is not. So if it is not, then you need to actually make it station. So um, the process of you making it station is called differencing. Yeah. So it's actually getting the uh, differential. Those guys who did calculus, it's actually the differential of the first one. And uh, you might want to do a differential of the second one until the point where when you do that test, you make sure that it is stationed. Then you stop your differencing. Um, so if you difference, if you do the differential on the first time and you achieve that stationarity, then it is of order one. If you do um, it the second time, it means of it's of order two. So the differencing uh, factor. These are things and concepts that you just need to be aware of. But there are uh, methods that actually we have. Uh, tools that actually do this for you. But as an ML engineer and uh, someone who will be working with this, it is very, very important for you to know. But there are instances where when you plot and do the test, uh, you will come that maybe there are instances where uh, even without doing differencing, you find that your, 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 your data is stationed. So you can actually proceed and do the modeling yeah, on rare occasion. Now, the final terminology is uh, called SARIMA. SARIMA is actually autoregressive. Okay, now, uh, the, the next one, even before you get to SARIMA, we have ARIMA. So remember, I mentioned that the first model was autoregressive, the second one was moving averages. Now we are introducing integ integrals. So integrals through differentiating, we are uh, integrating uh, those two. And uh, that is where we come up with ARIMA. It is actually superior because it's combining, it's combining uh, uh, both autoregressive and moving averages, uh, while at the same same time providing a mechanism within which non-stationary uh, series can be made stationary. That is why it's called autoregressive integrated moving average. Now, there is a factor of seasonality that needs to be uh, put into consideration, especially for non-stationary uh, series. So if uh, you have non-stationary series, then when you're using a RIMA and there is seasonality in those non-stationary series, then the best uh, approach is to, to use is called SARIMA. SARIMA is Seasonal Autoregressive Integrated Moving Averages Model. Quite a mouthful. Uh, before I move on, some of the subsequent slides uh, is what I've mentioned. Um, so it's just going to skim through. I'm going to open the floor for uh, any discussions for those people who joined. I know there are people who joined a bit later and uh, they might have one or two questions. And uh, any, 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 I'm, I'm opening the floor for any feedback or questions or even adjustments. Yeah.
it's open. I am going to open the participants. Wale wanajificha ni ni wafufu. Ni wafunyue. Karibu sana Felista, karibu Masi, Danson, Dan, Carol. Welcome. I think I lost Eric. Eric I'm going to oh, he's there. Carol, what, what do you think? Are we together so far? Or uh, is this too much? Is it? I came, I came late, sorry. Uh, uh, thank you for the welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm, I'm following. You're following? It's yeah. not too much, yeah, it's not too much. Okay, perfect. Yes, I'm following. Uh, but now I missed the first slides, but I'll make sure I catch up in the, once you share the, the, uh, the, the recording. The recording, yes. okay, perfect. Yes. All right. Done. Yeah, I'm still doing that uh, as well. Hey, but I've been following. So. You're following? Yeah. 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 All right. Hey, Enrico? Ni Enrico, I'm a name. Ni wewe, Enrico. Fungo aro. You forgot to even welcome me, but it's okay. <laughs> But as guys wana jifungwa rao, unaweza songa kwa hii ingine slide before this one, the one with terminologies on stationary. Okay. I'm having trouble with the graphics. This one? Uh, graphics, yes. This no, one? The one with, um, there was the one that was indicating on stationary. Oh no, go back. Uh, stationary. Oh, the... Yes, the weekly stationary. Uh, where? Which one? I have no idea when you talk about any forward. Up, 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 okay. Yes, what's the question? Go ahead. Oh, my question mainly is um, I, I lost you guys for a moment and I don't really understand what you meant by stationary or non-stationary. Okay. This, um, let me give an example, probably it's, it's true. Is this whereby you find the time series is still, it's predicting something that is going on, like the stock exchange, mm -hmm. is that non-stationary? Mm -hmm. And then the one whereby you are looking at market sales, which are already stationary, they are not ongoing, is that stationary? Okay, um, the thing is, even with the stocks, you might have instances where you consider stocks to be stationary. What should be your guiding um, uh, determinant for whether your series is stationary or not should be um, when you, there is a test that you do, and uh, I'll just mention that test and we see the results. Uh, there's a test that you do on, on your series, uh, but basically the idea behind that test is take uh, a series and slice it uh, into into several say slices yeah between the window between the time lags yeah so there are some statistical measures within those time lags that should be uh, constant uh, for instance and as an example it could be the mean or the variance yeah so if you slice uh, your series into three yeah you're looking at a window of say two years and then you slice your, your, your two years into three, um, does your mean or any other statistical measure within the first slice, uh, is it the same as uh, the mean of uh, the second slice and is it the same as the mean of uh, the, third, the, the third slice? So there are statistical measures is what determines um, whether uh, a series is stationary or not. And uh, for you to do any significant uh, predictions using time series, you need to make sure that your your series is stationary. So, um, on that slicing, in the whole series, I'm assuming like the one you showed whereby we have year one, one, two, three to 24. Mm -hmm. um, are you slicing like pieces of this series? Yes, that one. Like now up to 36, assuming we slice, let's say, 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15. Are we slicing that way or how? Yes, uh, absolutely. But now uh, the slicing is just as an example. I've, uh, I've, I've used the slicing to, 
to, to just explain uh, the concept behind stationarity. But you, in, uh, in actual sense, this is not something you do in, in terms of like now coding, you go and slice and do the study. No, there are tools that actually uh, do this um, uh, in their own mechanism. I've just used that slicing as an example to understand the concept. But yes, um, the, I think the concept, uh, you've, you've gotten the concept right. When you look at this window, the time window between uh, one and five, that is basically January and, uh, and May. Um, what was the statistical uh, measure? You've taken, for example, the mean. So if you take the mean of uh, one and five, January and, and, and May, it's definitely going to be different between May and uh, say October. You see, because uh, look at those values, they are high and stuff. So this is a typical example of um, a series that needs to be frozen before you make any prediction. You need to make this series stationary before you make any prediction. And there are techniques of doing that. Does this make sense now? Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. All right. Any other question? Um, I was going one by one. Dan Karamongea. Danson? Danson, are we together? Hello. Hi, Danson. Yes, uh, I'm good. I'm following. You're following? We are together? Yes. Yes, we are together. Okay, perfect. Marcy, yeah. I also noticed you joined a bit late. Uh, are we together? Yeah, we are together. We are together, though. I'm seeing um, <laughs> things as I read in school. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> not that I know I remember <laughs> that's a good thing um, when you relate now the, the next step is just now to, to implement it's, 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 it's actually good to hear that you guys uh, read these things in school um, all this stuff me are, I've, I've just come after school so it shows uh, what uh, you guys are being taught in school eh? it's uh, Mini Likwa Shule, a lot of years ago, mini dinosaur, I'm an old chuck. I took a phone to raise it, unless Lili Funzo and Likwa Nalala. That is also another possibility. I'm not sure. What to raise up a Shule, you know, when I say my sick of phones and a kumbo Lili Funzo and Likwa Nalala. So we can't rule that out. But it's a good thing to hear that Likwa Funzo and Lili Funzo and uh -huh. uh, yeah, and that's a good one. Someone else was talking. Um, Felista, are we together? Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, we are together. I think Nishay Funzo. Uh... The shape ones are once time series, so I think yes. Ah. So ni kunini ni kujikumbusha tu some terminology. Good stuff, good stuff. So so you need to refer to some of the funds that you need. You know how many funds? In 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 the in the, in the, the morning class, I was saying um, in our sessions, this this is normally our our principle. Yeah, session Z to Zote. Uh, the objective ni kutoa ujinga. So unaona ujinga actually si kutoa, ni kupunguza. Kwa sababu the the difference between us guys who are uh, learning and those guys who are ahead of us um, the the geniuses. Sisi wote ni wajinga, but the level of ujinga ndio tofauti. Sisi ujinga yetu bado iko mingi kidogo. Au au wengine ujinga iko kidogo. So when you guys learn something Muneza Rusha kwa class, Danka na atoe ujinga, mi ni atoe ujinga, Eriko pia atoe ujinga. Ujinga ni tofauti. So, venye mulifunzo wa class, hata nikipotea hapa, I encourage you, munisaidia pia mimi ujinga itoke kwa hongo. So, I think that is the biggest thing, and that is a differentiating thing between our sessions and any other sessions. Um, I think you guys have, have attended several other sessions and there is something unique about our sessions. And uh, I think uh, that is the best way we can learn. Uh, what you guys learn outside there, 
bring it to class, raise it with the raise it and explain to people, and that's how all of us benefit. That was just a by the way. Eriko, Eriko, we could learn a new story of Jinga, isn't it? Daudi ange kuwa patunge kubaliana. But yeah, <laughs> academic Jinga. Yes, academic Jinga. Yeah. Yeah. Now Jinga si matusi. It's it's actually it's it's actually good to 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 evaluate yourself as someone who who doesn't know something, and then you go in and learn about it. That is the context that I mean. I don't I don't want us to take that Jinga as an insult, no. No one is a uh, is a stupid uh, or, or 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 ignorant. That's why I use the word uh, the Swahili word. It's much better than the English word. The English word sounds like an insult. <laughs> okay, moving on swiftly. Uh, is there anyone who have not? Okay, so I think we move to. I had mentioned about stationality. And uh, basically, all those words that I've indicated there, they are more or less what I've explained. And if you guys have uh, gotten uh, the explanation, then um, I think uh, this slide is a bit easier for us. Excuse me. And uh, I'll need to make a brief on uh, the tests that you do to determine if. Uh, your your trend is uh, stationary or not? It is called the Kifula test. Yo fula ni fula or mafala? I want to hear some people. Is it fula? Is it fala? Felista. Fula. Oh, fula. Okay. All right. So let's let's look at uh, the Kifu, the Kifula test now. Basically, there is uh, that parameter. If it's greater than zero, um. Uh, then it means uh, it's actually an I hypothesis. So um, the parameter value, if it is greater than zero, then it means it is not stationary. And you need to make it stationary. So the objective is to make that parameter to be zero. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, you'll see the Python code when I, I, when I explain the notebook and how to uh, derive to that. Yeah. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, all right, now um, there are certain uh, additional concepts where, what's the time now? Should we take a, a 10 minutes break or uh, we continue? We take a 10 minute break and come back or we continue? I vote we continue. Uh -huh. Anyone with a different opinion? We continue. All right. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Uh, there is a message in chat. Let me see what's in chat. Ah, there was uh, someone mentioning five minutes break, so we, we vote again. So two against one. Who else feels uh, we, we can take a five minutes break? Caroline, you may vote. Danson, what do you think? Yeah, five minutes break will do. Okay, Marcy. Mini kosa to kendele. Okay, Felista, sasa wendi una wendi una mua. Cause ni draw sasa. Any can do to me kendele matu. Ah yeah yeah okay. So what we do, what to do, what to do, this it's me to make the short. So what we will do, uh, let's proceed. And then at some point, we're going to take a break. When we join, uh, we can uh, move. So we continue for the next, say, 15 minutes. And then we take a break, uh, five minutes break. And then uh, we will continue to the end. Um, time series is very, very expansive. And there are certain concepts that uh, you'll have to practice through the week. And uh, the next session would actually be the last session for time series and, uh, and drive it through to the end. So we won't cover everything today. We'll cover most of the groundwork today. 
and then uh, um, take home, uh, or rather, yeah, we take home uh, something, and as usual, we practice. When it comes to on Saturday, we take the last class on Saturday. We'll 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 have uh, hopefully we'll cover the remaining bit for time series, and then we introduce. Um, other concepts that I find critical, things like dimensionality, reduction, feature engineering, all those things by solving a classification problem. Yeah, so that is the plan. Uh, let's proceed Kidogo before we take that break. Now, um, just like in uh, regression, it's important in time series, we also look at correlations of um, observations, yeah? So in this case, uh, there is a way of detecting correlations of observations within uh, time lags. So time lags is uh, between uh, an hour ago and six hours ago. Is there any correlation between what you observed six hours ago and, uh, and uh, one hour or two hours ago? So basically that is what we need to look out for uh, when you're doing time series, yeah? And, uh, Seasonality, I've explained seasonality, and uh, it's exactly um, if there is a repeated uh, set of observations on specific time lags uh, that can be attributed to certain events, uh, uh, then we look, uh, our series is behaving or it has seasonality. So it should not be confused. You can imagine if we had no way of factoring in seasonality and you're looking at um, the demand, support demand of a call center, like I'd mentioned before, and uh, you, you, you predict that, okay, your model has uh, predicted that, okay, now we are doing pizza orders and uh, on, on Thursday, there was a lot of orders and today is Friday. So your model will predict, uh, say, the orders will be high because of yesterday they were high. That is an example. But if we factored in and say that since every, it seems like every Thursday the orders are normally high, but immediately after Thursday the orders go down, then there is a, semi, there's a seasonal period, Thursday, that orders are normally high. So if that is factored in, then in, when your model predicts for Friday, it will understand that, okay, now uh, it should go down, but up to this threshold, and now the possibility of making the correct prediction because you factored in seasonality is uh, enhanced. So your model will be more reliable because it factored in seasonality. Right. Um, we have methodologies. I've spoken about this. What I want to take you guys through is uh, something called BJ methodology. Enrico, it is Box Jenkins. Muskia? Uh -huh. Box Jenkins methodology. Take notes. <laughs> <laughs> Nadira, what is in bracket can be confusing. <laughs> I, I, I have to... <laughs> I had to be very specific. <laughs> I had to be very, very specific. Okay. Thank you for exposing me. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, now, um, there is one methodology for uh, that is a process uh, for doing analyzing time series. Yeah. And uh, it's more or less uh, revolving around what we've already spoken about. And in this methodology, there are several steps. Yeah. And the first step is to check uh, for uh, uh, stationarity. So you get your data set, you need to, before even you dive deeper into doing your prediction, um, is your data set stationary? If it is stationary, pro pro proceed to the next step. But if it's not, you need to make it stationary. And uh, there are certain uh, plots that you can generate uh, called uh, run sequence plots that you can generate to help you um, uh, determine um, the seasonality. Station, sorry, stationarity. Yeah. And then um, uh, the next one of still, 
we are still identification. Now, the first step of Box Jenkins, we need to identify. There's a process called identification. So high level, we have identification. And then the second one is uh, estimation. And then um, uh, the third one, which is the last uh, step for Box Jenkins, is uh, more like checking the metrics, uh, like now the performance of, of, of what you've done. Yeah, so in identification, the, there are some steps, like now checking the stationary. And then the second one is now um, uh, checking the autocorrelation uh, by generating auto autocorrelation plots. So there are ways of looking at autocorrelation within time lags. Yeah, so you look at uh, the time lag, time lag windows and checking are they autocorrelated. Yeah. And we have something called partial autocorrelations. And you have to deduce between the inference between autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation functions. This is, can be done by plotting something called correlograms. These are very uh, deep technical terms. Yeah. But when we start, uh, it could be either towards the end of today's session, or it could be the first thing we do the, um, next Saturday. We we'll need to, we will actually see how, uh, how all this pan out and uh, the implication. We'll walk through example case by case and explain all of these terms, uh, yeah? So when you're playing this, uh, when you're playing this uh, uh, recording, Try and do your own, own research to get your own understanding. It, that will trigger questions. And when you trigger questions, you'll probably find answers. But if you don't find answers, bring back the questions in class on Saturday, and we will definitely get the answers, and we will conclude. We will get conclusion, and you'll be confident that if someone wants you to do a time series problem, you'll actually build a model, a time series model, with a lot of confidence, having taken care of all this stuff that you're talking about. All right. And uh, now, um, like I said, correlograms are plots yeah, that you look at. Uh, you get an autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation functions. These are values. Uh, when you get this, basically, once you get this, you plot those values that you get against uh, the time lags, against the time lags. So the pattern you observe in your plot would actually um, advise you on whether to use an, uh, an AR or an MA, autoregressor or uh, moving averages, or whether to use an ARMA, yeah? Autoregressive um, moving averages. So um, the pattern you get is, uh, will derive. So if, for example, you, you, you do your autocorrelation function, and then you see a spike decay towards zero, yeah, then you're most likely going to use an AR model with P. So P is the time lag, yeah? P is the time lag, and then if, if it's the spikes cut off to zero, then you're going to use Q, uh, moving average with Q. So Q is the error term. Like now, you're, 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 you're studying the pattern in the past, based on the error term. So ARMA, remember we are using both um, the time lag and the error term. Uh, uh, time lag values and the error term values. So that is ARMA. It's combining uh, autoregressive and uh, moving averages. So when you see a pattern that spikes decay towards zero, and um, you can use ARMA or AR, yeah? Uh, the same to uh, partial auto, auto autocorrelation functions, yeah? So this is just a time to, uh, a table to help you um, choose which model are you going to uh, use, All right? Now, um, we come to the second, the second uh, um, uh, part of Box Jenkins methodology. The first one was identification, which has autocorrelation. It also has uh, stationarity and also determining which model that you want. Now estimation, again, you don't need to worry about this. We have tools that does this, but it's important to, um, to understand what's going on. This is uh, synonymous to, or rather similar to 
uh, when we did our first class uh, ordinary least squares method, there was a dashboard with summary, yeah, and some estimated values. So it's more or less the same thing, and the tool will actually generate this. But uh, in the Jupyter code, Jupyter notebook that I've uh, prepared, you will actually get to see some of these values and infer on them and uh, understand them. All right, once you've estimated, then you have to check the results. Um, it's called diagnostics checking. Um, now, the objective of uh, this, based on the summary again that you see, you could use several models and you pick one that has the lowest AIC value. So AIC value is this one. Yeah. And uh, you pick the one that has the lowest. So th these terms, just like when you are covering ordinary least squares method, most of these terms were not clear the very, very first time. But as you, as you uh, uh, do the notebook and uh, do your own studies and uh, poke questions, yeah, the meaning and significance of these uh, terms will come to light. Yeah. So this being the first class, um, I wouldn't want to dwell much into this. Um, most of this would be covered in uh, the second class for time series. All right, now another thing about, uh, besides checking, uh, uh, besides checking the, the summary, yeah, uh, there are two plots that you can actually use to also check the diagnostic. Uh, we have autocorrelation plot, which needs to be turning towards zero. Yeah, that is the objective. And uh, the four plot. Uh, these are plots that you plot it and it, it generates all these uh, plots for you. Uh, there is an interpretation to it. So that is the last part of Box Jenkins methodology. Moving averages. I've explained this previously, and uh, um, I think uh, one thing that uh, I, I, I don't think I'd mentioned previously was uh, you can choose the time window within which to, 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 to measure your moving average. You could look at, if you're looking at a two-year period, you can chase, you can choose to, to, to split it uh, every 12 months or even, um, six months so you're moving average you're looking at uh, a time lag of say six months or 12 months or even the entire period 24 to calculate the moving average based on the error error terms <sighs> smoothing before i go to the smoothing any question Okay, I think this is the point where we take a break and then uh, we meet after uh, five minutes at exactly uh, 3.45, 3.55. We can uh, reconvene again at exactly 3.55 and continue. Uh, uh, is that okay? Yes, but quick question. Yes. Um, if you could scroll back, there's those charts whereby DJ um, plots. This one? Yes, the circle. What does this mean? Uh, we'll have to cover, we'll cover all, each of these uh, plots uh, and uh, get, influence, get influence of what they mean. Um, each of them have an interpretation. Okay, okay. So we will definitely cover that. All right, can take the break. All right. Kuna mdu mingina kuna swali before we take a break. Okay, let's meet at exactly 3.55. See you guys. Okay, um, I think that was a good break.
Uh, for those of you who are needed sugar, I hope you've taken some sugar. These classes at times can be a bit uh, draining, but I believe we are now good. Caro, are we back? Or uh, guys, I've not been back yet. Let me just confirm. Caro? I'm back, I'm back. Ah, good. Danson? Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm back. Ah, uh, good. Uh, Dan? I'm back, I'm back. Okay, that's a good sample. All right. Um, so we had left it at smoothing. Now, <clears throat> there's one thing with uh, with time series. It looks it's it's just like all the other models. It's trying to extract some underlying uh, patterns from within uh, the data set in in reference, especially to the time lags. So there are instances where um, there are the observations that could appear um, or would be considered to be noise, especially uh, the random uh, changes that uh, would seemingly hide uh, behind uh, the specific patterns underneath, uh, underneath the series. So uh, the objective is normally to try and remove this random uh, random behavior extracted from the, 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 the underneath pattern so that the pattern can actually be learned by a model. So a smoothing is a process of which we remove such random uh, behavior from our series so that um, we refine the, the actual pattern that actually is being displayed by the series. So we have several types of uh, smoothing. Uh, the first is, and all these are mathematical, so uh, unless we, we try them uh, with the specific uh, values, uh, it would be a bit difficult. Uh, right now, uh, at, in this class, is just an intro, and uh, for you guys to understand the formula for each one of them. And later on in Jupyter, I will uh, show you guys uh, the smoothing approach that has been used in um, the very, very first one. So smoothing is that process in which we are removing those uh, random behavior to, to, uh, to actually show or uh, clearly uh, expose the under, underlying patterns of a series when we are studying time series. Yeah? And, the, the, the projected formula is what is for a single exponential smoothing level. Okay. Um, we have double exponential uh, smoothing, uh, double exponential smoothing. So basically, uh, um, I'd like, uh, How would I explain this? Um, unlike in the single exponential smoothing, this one adds an additional uh, parameter, uh, the trend smoothing factor, which is beta. And uh, in the single one, we had a smoothing factor called uh, alpha. So we double exponential smoothing. George, 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 you are Karibu sana, George. We feel your presence. That was George when you to join. Okay. Um, yeah, I was saying double exponential smoothing technique has an additional parameter, which is beta, and it's optimal, uh, but Depending on the values that you choose for both alpha and beta, you will see the results of a training factor. Now let's look at the image. 
of alpha of 0 0.02 and beta of 0 0.02. That is the red line. You see the general pattern is as much as we have spikes uh, for this specific uh, series, as much as we have spikes and low, it goes up, it picks the general pattern. So according to this moving, um, the general pattern is an ascending order. Look at the red one. It goes up. It has a net increase up to somewhere here. And then it decreases slightly, start decreasing. That is the, the general pattern. But if you look at the specific, the specific pattern is, uh, look at the blue one, alpha of 0 0.9 and beta of 0 0.9. I think that's the one. And if you look at it, it is, it is closely uh, resembling um, the actual one, which is, I think, purple. So um, what might be considered like a random spikeness is still in the, in the series. Yeah. So the objective is to play around with the, the values you put for alpha and beta and uh, to, to try and determine the optimal um, um, uh, smoothing for uh, your, your series. And then triple exponential. So this is like now uh, introducing a third one called gamma. So these, all these are mathematical. This is uh, super complex, um, but uh, with time, and, and some of these things are done by the, the, the tools, yeah? So you're not, you're not obligated to know all these mathematical formulas and, uh, um, and uh, it's the formation of these formulas, but you are actually obli obligated to understand what smoothing is and uh, the various, uh, smoothing techniques and uh, why would you choose one or rather what would be the impact of one smoothing techniques to the other uh, as compared to the other with regards to your series and your model and this being the last slide i had mentioned about uh, sarima the seasonal autoregressive integrated moving average where you factor in uh, uh, seasonality within your non-stationary uh, um, series. Yeah, so the first thing is like a four, a four step. The first step is a, a autoregression model, build it. And then the second one is moving average. And then the differencing factor, um, uh, where we get the differential of, uh, of, um, of, uh, of the series with the intent of uh, making it stationary. And then the final one, which does not exist in ARIMA, is to look at the same parameters for the, season, for the seasonality and combine this in, uh, in ARIMA so that the seasonality aspect is brought to, uh, it's considered as well. So the P is uh, the time lag with regards to the previous period, the actual values, the D, is the differential, but now for the, the seasonality. Q is the error term, um, the time lag based on the error term, and uh, S is now the, the seasonality. And with all that that is in, in, in brackets, you add it to ARIMA. ARIMA is, we are just considering P, D, and Q in lowercase. So you'll see this in action in the notebook. But basically, all, what all this uh, normative or what all this theory is saying is uh, we must apply transformation to our time series to remove seasonality, especially for the non-stationary behavior. So if you want to use um, uh, both uh, autoregressive auto and uh, moving averages uh, uh, integrated, um, meaning on, on a seasonal angle, then uh, we can use uh, Sarima. All right, so I think uh, based on this, we can now move to the notebook and get to see a snapshot. I'll, I'll, I'll share the notebook. This is the plan moving forward. I'm going to share the notebook, share the video. At your own time, digest what I've said and uh, generate questions out of what I've uh, said out of this session. And the first step you need to do, uh, the questions you generate, the first step you need to do, try and get those answers.
if you get conflicting or confusing answers, uh, take note of them. And then on Saturday, bring them up in, in class. So we will uh, review today's session. We will review today's session and uh, get to understand what uh, each one of us uh, understood about the various uh, issues. And if at all there were some questions, uh, if at all there were some questions that came up through the week, we can deliberate, discuss, and then start the second class. So next week would largely be looking at the notebook and understanding the concepts much, much better with the intention of actually making and building a time series uh, problem from ground all the way to making predictions and translating the results. So in the next session, we will actually see the results of a time series and make predictions and uh, interpret them. And that would cause uh, the closure on time series uh, session. And if we are allowed with time, we can now uh, venture into the next topic. Otherwise, we will save the next topic for the next coming Saturday. All right, before I open the notebook, um, questions? I know the session after the break was pretty short because we had discussed quite a, a lot of stuff previously before the slide. I had mentioned all this before the slide. Any question? There's a question I'd ask on the chat. Oh, about Which the notebook. Are... Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll share the notebook. Let me see. Uh, did, you, did you ask another question? Let me see. No. Oh, the channel of sharing the notebook. I'll post it on the WhatsApp group. All right, all right, thanks. That works for you guys, I believe. It does for me. Okay. So I'll assume there is no there are no questions. And I can open the notebook. All right. So for opening the notebook, I'll have to stop sharing first and then I, I can say give me a minute. So um, I was saying uh, at an individual level, you could either pick your own data set, go to Kaggle, pick your own data set, or think of if you have a data set and you feel like uh, solving um, a time series problem, uh, then you could go ahead and do this. Um, this is, uh, uh, this particular notebook, uh, I was thinking of say a day, a busy day at the call center. How do the number of uh, support calls come through hour by hour? Yeah? And can we be able to tell in the next hour, this number of support call is going to come through? Yeah? And uh, depending on how you build up, I would want to ask a question. Besides, uh, after, after being able to predict the specific volume, especially in a call center. Uh, are you able to, or rather, can we, are we able to not only tell, like in the next hour, we are going to call, we're going to receive uh, outage complaints from this number of DSTV customers. Can we actually uh, build up on that using either a different way uh, or even uh, another different problem solving um, method? to extract who are these people who, has going, who are going to make this call. So it's quite an interesting uh, field, but the moment you're able to predict that uh, at a call center or even at, at pizza in orders, uh, we are going to, in the next hour, we are going to get like uh, say 25 calls. And these calls are most likely to come from these customers. So instead of that customer calling you to order pizza, you call them and tell them, hey, okay, Today we have this and this and this and this. Uh, can we dispatch a delivery for you? They'll be shocked. It will, it will be like, hey, okay, these people are reading my mind. Huh? I was about to order my pizza and I normally take Hawaiian or, uh, or uh, Peri Peri. And uh, they're calling me and telling me that they are, they are ready to deliver Peri Peri. You can imagine that alone takes customer experience to the next level. 
Yeah. So before a customer actually complains or makes a request, you already know with a certain level of accuracy and you actually take action um, before they actually trigger the conversation. So uh, customers for such a company, what I'm going to do before they complain, I do Unenda kwa sort. Yeah, what a life. Um, that is a, a dream. The question is, are we able to do that? Are we able to simulate it? Are we able to actually do it and, and make such predictions? So I want you guys to, to, to practice this coming week. And the context, the first one that we are going to do is just to predict a time series in terms of the number of uh, support messages in the coming hour or uh, minute. So the first cell is uh, to check through, uh, to import the libraries. And then as usual, we have uh, Matplotlib uh, uh, display settings, uh, environmental uh, display settings, so that you can able to see, we are able to see the plots. Now, um, this mean absolute percentage error is a Python function that we are going to use it to, to uh, to generate the mean absolute percentage error. Yeah. So whenever you have a function that you need to use in your in your modeling, you just put it in a cell. And this is one of the metrics that uses. Um, it's called MAP. M A P E. Um, metric used to measure the performance of any time series. Yeah. So you might not be able to take this to the end uh, where we we actually use MAP. But in the next class, we'll be able to do that. All right. So the first one is uh, to import the data set. Yeah. So we are assuming uh, we'll, we have quantities of uh, messages that come through every hour. So for this message, we had 155 within the first hour, uh, which is midnight, 121 within the hour two. And like that, like that, all the way. So uh, can you actually see a trend um, of uh, messages, support calls, like now my DSTV has, uh, my DSTV is blah, blah, blah. I can't watch this station. Are you able to like pick a trend? Is there a trend and can you, are you able to project? So because we passed the dates, uh, what I had mentioned here, because we passed the dates, uh, the, the date is imported as a date time column. Yeah. A copy, uh, message dot info, number of messages. Had made the date uh, uh, as an index. Okay, so we plot it. And this is what we are seeing. Yeah, this is what we are seeing. Now, the next thing, uh, who can tell me, uh, based on the steps that I had mentioned in our slides, what is the first thing you need to do when you're solving a time series problem? Mtaspongea ntanyamaza tu, mpaka time niishe, alafu nifunge, alafu we call it a day. Even me, I'll just keep quiet. It's all right. Nisawa tu. Check the stationality. Mm -hmm. Anyone of a different opinion? Dancer? Carol? Um, yes, sir. Okay. I agree. Okay. Actually, that is the first thing we need to do. Yeah. We check the stationarity. The second one. So there are some uh, several steps. Now we have we've already plotted our we've already plotted our our series, and that is, this is how it looks like. So if this is thirteenth uh, uh, April, seventeenth April, twenty first of April, twenty fifth of April, first of May, fifth of May, ninth of May, thirteenth of May. Are we able to predict how it's going to look like on 14th, 15th, 16th? Yeah. 
So this function here is uh, uh, the one that would help us come up with a moving average and plot it, yeah? So if you look at uh, our, our series, we, we've plotted moving averages, yeah? Look at uh, how it is based on uh, the rolling mean trend. This is still on understanding the pattern based on moving averages, yeah? So the, blue, the, the green one, is your moving average with a time window of five, yeah. Time, with, time lag of five. Here, this is where you specify the time, the time lag, okay? This notebook will be available to you guys. Now, uh, we do smoothing with uh, um, a time window of 30, meaning we are looking at the past 30 days and using that data to make our average, like, um, uh, our, our, as our moving average. So you see it's slightly different. So it picks the general trend, yeah? So when you look at uh, smoothing as a factor, there is some uh, uh, what we call random fluctuations of uh, the values that we are trying to extract. Because here, the general pattern is in a panda ju, in a shuka kidogo, in a panda ju, in a shuka kidogo, in a panda. So that is what we are trying to derive. Is it constant, yeah? Once you achieve that, then we look at the period. If you had a data set that is for more than 30 days, you can actually look at uh, smoothing it for, uh, for more than uh, 30 days. We pick 90 days. And then to display the intervals, we, within that function, plot, plot moving average, we display the interval so that we see the boundaries, yeah? So um, ideally, moving averages, it's close to a straight line uh, with uh, some slight variations and the boundaries are there. So we are still studying the, um, the data. Okay, there is another one, exponential. We spoke about exponential smoothing, yeah? Now plotting the exponential smoothing, check this out. Um, look at what happens with the moving averages. And then look at what happens with the, with the exponential smoothing. So when you look at this, uh, you'll see a slight difference in the way um, uh, uh, the impact of that exponential smoothing has as compared to um, uh, uh, without, without smoothing, yeah? Double exponential smoothing, this is it. Uh, that is a function for double exponential smoothing. And then when you plot it, uh, you get to see double exponential smoothing. Remember, we are using alpha and beta values, yeah? And you give alpha and beta values. So you could play around with these values, yeah? And see what impact of the value you provide uh, does that have to your smoothing, yeah? So look at that. Um, look at the red one with the alpha of 0 0.02 and beta of 0 0.02. And then time series plots. This is our time series plot. Now this is where we use Dickey Fuller to, to, to determine the stationarity of, uh, of our series. Now based on this, Dickey Fuller is telling us that our, 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 our series is stationary. So we could actually go ahead and do, and do our modeling, yeah? Because our plot is stationary. It's stationary. So we check the autocorrelation, uh, both partial and uh, uh, complete. And then in the, in the next slide, we are using Sarima. So this function again um, is one that uh, uh, generates the model, yeah? And returns, uh, uh, we, can, we are able to now plot and returns the summaries of results from which we can infer. So if you are not using Sarima and we, we separated this into autoregression auto and, uh, and uh, what is it called, moving averages, the common thing that would help us to determine which model to use is AIC. Um, the one with the lowest AIC is the best model. So this is when you're using Sarima, this is the uh, report that you get. So that is it for, uh, 
for uh, uh, time series. Uh, uh, in uh, on Saturday, we will give. We, on Saturday, we are going to give this a much much more in depth uh, look. You'll get to understand uh, much much more in the what is in this notebook so i really really encourage you to go through it generate your own questions because this notebook is going to to form the starting point where we move from moving forward you're going to understand quite a lot in practicality so when you generate your own questions then you when you get to receive the answers you'll be more it they are most likely to to stick in the long run now once we understand this you are able to pinpoint uh, or generate a new problem and do a prediction or and extend and extend the predictions for the next say the next 48 hours or the next uh, couple of days how would it look like and then we visualize that as well so that is what we will do in the next uh, in the next class and uh, for today i think that marks the end of it's, it was just an intro, introduction to time series and basically highlighting the components and uh, the, through this notebook, you can actually see some of the uh, work involved in uh, solving a time series problem. So it is uh, expansive. Um, spend the next one week to, to get comfortable with some of these terms where it was not clear. Um, go through them again and then prepare yourselves for the next. Um, class on uh, Saturday where we will cover all this in much in depth, much in much depth and uh, generate a problem and forecast. We will do forecasting. How will it look like for the next uh, 48 hours, for instance? Having said that, I think uh, I put a full stop. I, full of, I put a full stop and now invite questions, comments and feedback. That's it. So I'll just go through, uh, before we wrap up, I'll just go through one by one, just to get uh, feedback. And uh, you, uh, you just say uh, if you've learned something and uh, what you feel you're going to cover through the week, and then you give your feedback. Those three things, just those two, three. Danza na nani? Nianza na nani? Eriko usha fungua, anza wacha tuanza na wewe. I was going to yes. I was going to say before that. Yeah. Well, I'll ask my question, then Caroline will start. <laughs> so, um. In this, uh, is there like, because I've been looking, uh, can we compare the different, what are they called? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> can you compare? The different smoothings and see which one is better than the other. Yes, you can do actually that. Um, smoothing techniques, remember you're doing smoothing, you're, you're doing smoothing and doing your modeling. So... Uh, you could play around with that. Oh. Yeah, you can. Carol, you can take over the stage now. <laughs> Why don't you complete? But it's okay. Carol, it's, it looks like someone really wants to listen to your voice. Yeah, to hear me talk. Unfortunately, there's someone having a, a meeting. Let me ah, yes, yes, the one, Let one me one. let me ask the last person. Yeah. Okay, okay, sour, sour. No problem. Uh, Duncan? Yeah, the session has been uh, good. Uh, I've learned a few things. So I'll need to, uh, as I said, go and look deeper into it. Especially those steps are involved in uh, working with ten series problems. I'll definitely I'll definitely look into that. But so far, session I learned a couple. 
All right. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, Danson? So, hey. Uh, the class was awesome. And the insights in time series were also good because I've not experienced a lot of time series problems. Then I guess throughout the week I'll research and get to know more examples of time series problems and maybe how to solve them. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Dan um, Marcy? Master on the chat water. I told you. Talk about it. I'm on the microphone. Maybe as Masi, I hope she'll get us before we drop off. But the good thing is the recording is there. She can always uh, follow through. Uh, Felista? Uh, session in the Kuapo. Uh, I think now. I think before I was taught on the theoretical part of it, I could quite much on practical how to apply it to Python and stuff. So I think now I can follow up on how to deal with it to me as a, the algorithm, the Sarima and the Arima models. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks for this. Um, Eriko. You can run, but you can't hide. We are with you now. What <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, the session was all right. Um, I'm, I was a bit curious about um, time series and I'm planning for this week, this coming week to try and slot some time from work to make sure I at least I go through the, um, the notebook and also research further and see a few tests in here and there. And in case I will have any questions I'll ask next time, very tough one. Mm. Wait, even Katosis is always here. Hey. <laughs> Okay, Eric. Uh, we are looking forward to the feedback after the after the week of uh, self study and analyzing this. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks, Eric. I don't know if Carol, you are ready for. Uh, she was ready from the start. Uh, okay. Carol to Sasa. Let's see. There is a chat message. Uh, it looks like Carol is having a meeting in the same place. So she's typing. And let's hope that she will uh, give us feedback, even if it's through chat. And then I'll be able to read. As she types, as she types, uh, I think this, was, this, this, this is just the beginning of time series. Definitely, there is quite a lot. And uh, standard to our approach is you get to learn um, uh, the concept in through a session like this one. And then uh, you have one week within which you have a notebook and uh, you have uh, what you've learned in the session. It is up to you as an individual to actually create time and digest what you learned in this session and create questions because it's only through questions that you will learn. So any concept that you had not understood uh, try and get answers. Um, you can get answers. Fortunately enough, this is this seasons. Uh, our sessions right now are already recorded, unlike previously. So you can always revisit the recording and play them, and you'll probably get answers in the in the in the recording. If you don't get answers you're seeking in the recording, nothing is preventing you from consulting other other guys, or even consulting Google, or even consulting um, other online uh, resources. 
uh, but the objective is to get those answers. Once you get those answers, should you, two things can happen. You can get a satisfactory answer and then you are home and dry, or you could get conflicting answers outside there. So should you get conflicting answers outside there, uh, I would really, really encourage you to bring them on board uh, the next Saturday, where we will look at all those conflicting answers. And you, who knows, you might find an answer um, from your colleague. One of us would be the one who probably would answer you. And uh, you will definitely get an answer that, uh, that Saturday. Yeah, that's a subsequent class. So that is the approach that I want us to use and uh, engage through the week. And let's do this practically. Um, every work needs to be done via Jupiter. Right. And then before I, I close, um, this is the feedback from uh, Caroline. Uh, no question, this session was insightful, a busy week ahead to digest, and she's grateful. Okay, all right, and uh, uh, I, I, can, I can't talk, no, no, no COVID, we have to coexist. <laughs> I understand, uh, we, we completely understand, Carol, and your feedback has been uh, well received. So before I, I wrap up, uh, remember, this is the group that has projects. So to next week, next weekend, next Saturday, uh, the concepts that we'll cover, um, please, uh, it would be good for, uh, I don't know how far we've gone, and I honestly don't know if we'll be able to, to do them as a group. I want you guys to think through if there is um, a group that is able to solve it, or to work as a team, the better. But if that model that we picked before Corona is not going to work, I want us to be honest about it. And we agree on uh, either individual or, uh, yeah, if you have an individual project that you need to walk through, you, can, you are free to bring it up. The idea is to be able to just learn the concept within your own context. So think through, if you can work, if you can work with the group projects, well and good. But if you feel it's different now, we need to take a different approach, feel free. Let's have that discussion on Saturday. And then we support each other to make sure that each one within their own individual projects, they are able to take their projects to production. That is the best, best, best way to learn. Having said that, thank you guys very much. And I look forward to having you guys again on, uh, on Saturday. All right, Eric is asking, can we get a debrief of the group projects? Uh, Eric, how do you mean? Uh, do you want uh, for me to bring out uh, what they are about or uh, what exactly do you want me to say? Okay, um, so actually I lost all my charts and I'm having a difficulty remembering what the project, uh, what was the question of the project like every details that were provided of the project and uh, the data as well. If you right. can provide the document, it would be great. All right. What I'll do, I can share the project details via email, uh, but just to mention that we had four groups and the approach we had picked was, each group was to act like a company. So each group consisted of three people, three members. So these three members were to construct a company problem. Once they created a problem, any other group member would pick them, would pick that problem and provide a solution. Any other group, sorry, not group member, any other group. So for instance, group one uh, came up with a problem for flight delay prediction. That is, uh, I think, Carol's uh, group. So this problem should be picked by any other group. It could be picked by either group two, group three, group four, and my understanding was group four are the ones who picked it. So group four, picking flight delay prediction, they are supposed to build a model for flight delay prediction and articulate this model and approach to group one. So when group one feels like they're satisfied with the explanation, so group one become the judge for group four work and like vice versa for all groups. This would have been a good approach because when you ask questions and you get answers, uh, you learn better and the other person actually gets to, to prepare well. So there is no fuss about it. You guys audit each other. 
So you will actually know what to expect. And since all of you guys are uh, machine learning engineers in the making, you'll be able to um, gauge. So I'm going to draft this in a single uh, document and I'll share it. And then you guys can let me know, should we continue the same approach or should we change it? Because the COVID pandemic, uh, we are working remotely. And uh, I know one challenge with working remotely, maybe times for meeting, times for discussion, um, might be challenging. So let's have that discussion that next coming Saturday, and then we agree on the best way forward. Uh, is it clear, uh, uh, Erico? Okay, you can yep. see a thumbs up. So that thumbs up. All right. So Carol is saying the issue is availing the data to the engineers. Okay, I wish I, wish I could understand that question. Is it that the data set, uh, the engineers solving your problem don't have the data set? Uh, or what exactly is the challenge? I just uh, Nani can you clarify that. Eh? We are in the same group. Eh? Who's that? Eric. Okay. And we actually had we are in the same group with Eric. Eh? Okay. And we had actually uh, tried to start the conversations around our project. Okay. But now we were missing the data because I think the data was submitted to you, and as uh, Eric has said, the document around that project. Eh? Okay. So we now we. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I get it now. There, there are some. Uh, there, there are groups that uh, pointed uh, availability of data on. Say they were using Kaggle available data, publicly available data. So when I share, I will share all these details, and then you guys can get the data and uh, continue with the conversation. I think that that would form a good basis uh, for us guys to start and pick up from. Uh, Saturday next week. Yeah. You got it, sir? Yes, 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 I got it. So I'll share the details. I'll share the details on WhatsApp and then we can we can engage via WhatsApp for the project, for the group project. All right. So if there is no other Info. I think I'll uh, I'll call it an evening, and I'm going to share all these details, starting with uh, the recording and then the notebooks. You guys have an, a wonderful weekend and a busy week ahead. Mm, you too. You too. Okay. Bye. See you.